This is a master combination padlock, which most everyone on this planet has seen, owned, or used at some point in their life. We all know they're not very secure, but that wasn't really well known until, you know, probably the 2000s when more and more people started becoming aware of that. Um, of course, they're still used, they're still made, they still work. We all know they can be bypassed. This version is a little unique because this is a cutaway model. I got this from someone on Lockpicking 101 forms many years ago and it just it, it fascinated me because it was really well done and it's cool to see all the inner workings of one of these types of locks. And we're going to go ahead and do a little demonstration. So if you didn't know how they work, you have three discs, one for each combination and they all have a slot or a gate I think it's the proper terminology you can see that they're just brass and the combination the number is calibrated to the position that they sit in so actually this one's lined up right now so you see how there's kind of a little u-shape cutout so that is a gate once all three gates are aligned, then the fence, which is this top part, it's actually kind of connected to the shackle, there's enough room for it to drop in, and then the lock can be open. So if I try to open it right now, it's running into the wheels, because all of these have to be lined up properly. And the way they're lined up is with the correct combination. And so the combination coincides with what position this little U-shaped cutout is on this back of the lock. Okay, so I, I honestly don't even know the combination. We're going to figure it out. You don't need a combination if you have a cutaway. So you can make one yourself. You can just drill a little hole in the back at about that position. And we're going to go ahead and try to demonstrate here. So I'm turning it clockwise. So there's one of the gates. So let's check the number. So that's about three. So we're going to go counterclockwise now. Watch the second wheel turn. Kind of go slow here. Okay, there it goes. It picked it up. And we want to line up. Okay, see it forming? There it goes. Let's look at this number. So 321 is our second number, so we go clockwise again, and it'll pick up and spin the third disc. I don't know if we can really see there, we can kind of see that back wheel. Just go nice and slow. Okay, there it is. So 32135. Okay, now if I pull up on this slow to try to show you, see before at this position it would be hitting the wheels. If I go a little further, nope, nope, actually it is hitting the wheel. That's okay though, since we're pretty close, I can just manually manipulate these fences, these gates, sorry. And there we go. 321.35. So let's just, maybe it's not quite 321.35, or it's just really close. 3, 21, 35. Oh, so it's not quite, oh, it's, it's right on the edge. It's right on the edge. So it can work. And as you can tell, you know, the, the cheaper the lock, the more play you have in the combination. We can probably get away with 4, 22, 34, you know, anywhere in that, around that range. That's kind of what makes locks pickable is that tolerance. So it's kind of the hack value you really get out of opening a lock without knowing or using the key. Of course, we know these can be shimmed. I have a <laughs> super rusty padlock shim. I found this in a drawer. I have not touched it for a long time, so I don't have a lot of luck with these. Some people make it look real easy. 
when I try it, it, they just don't seem to fit very well. Okay, but we'll give it a go here. So this is kind of the smaller size, and you just want it to be able to push down and move that little locking mechanism because it's, it's just spring-loaded. Okay, what I found works best is I have to pull up slightly on the shackle and try to push this down. I've broken so many of these because I just I don't have the technique down. Just try to push that down, turn it, see if I can... Still, I'm putting downward pressure and I'm pull up. Nope, didn't get it. Try it again. Again, yeah, other people can make this, make these work. I, I'm not very good at it. I always feel like I'm gonna break them. Oh, got it. That surprised me. Normally, uh, what happens to me when I use these, actually, you can see this one kind of separating. And when you put so much force on it, it just breaks this spot weld in here. You know, they're pretty cheap. You could do the same thing with a, uh, a, full, a, a aluminum can. You know, cut it out to this shape. That's all you really need. Nothing special. And the whole security part of this lock is just this spring-loaded bar. So all we're doing, if you didn't know, we're just pushing that piece of metal in, rotating it, and it's just pushing this out of the way so it can lift straight up. So here's the shim. And it's just blocking where that goes. Oh, I dropped it. Just push down, you rotate, and it's just kind of covering that slot up, and then moves. So you can make your own little cutaway at home. I'm sure most people have one of these laying around, even all the elitists that know that, oh, these aren't very secure. Yeah, everyone knows they can be shimmed, but it's still a neat little puzzle to mess around with. The Master Combination Padlock. Iconic.